JB here. Hope everyone's doing outstanding. July 17th, 2024, 3 o'clock here on this fine day. Pullback Wednesday. Uh, joking aside, markets, uh, it, it seems like there's two different markets the last five sessions, right? The, the small caps, the Dow components, and then you have the NASDAQ and the S&P. And it seems like uh, whether it's the quickest rotation that we've seen in quite some time or whatever it is uh, it's some of the names today in the dow so you take take a look united healthcare kind of skewing things and then some of the defense names are uh are doing well so so you, know, you take a look at you had well john deere is doing great today so it's uh interesting market you if you just follow the nasdaq you would think the market's gonna you know we're tumbling you know you read if i, I I'm trying to, you read through FinTwit, and if you didn't watch the market, you would think we were, there was a huge market crash, right? Uh, it's just funny how sentiment changes so quick. Yesterday, it's buy the dip. Today, it's uh, sell the rip. You know, everybody's, oh, I was in puts. You know, it's, it's funny how it all works, but hopefully we found the bottom here. I talk, I talk about 222 on the IWM. That seems to kind of be solid support. And then with the SPY, hopefully we get over 558. Uh, what we hold there, then we have uh netflix tomorrow with the earnings i think that'll be the next kick and if the netflix can at least uh post a decent report in line or, or better than expected then maybe that will just buoy stocks stocks keep them bid into the weekend and then earnings really start to pick up into next week i uh, take a look at the uh, p over the last i think it's a three minute chart we pretty much had that gap down and then we had the pull at about 10 to 10 30 and then we just we've just been chopping around ever since almost like a boring chop so i mean if we didn't gap down today maybe we would just be flat on the session but that hasn't been the case uh and then the thing of note and i talked about this the last two sessions is the vix and you take a look at the vix where's my vix right here up three days in a row and up over 11 percent percent today i don't even know where it is exactly right at this exact second uh it's up 10 percent 10.5 percent so right near the highs at the end of may that we hit we hit up near 15 at the end of may not anywhere near what we hit in april when we got into the 20s so just things i'm watching could be something could be nothing now if, if you look at the week's performance the dow is up three percent this week so far in three days the small caps are up four and a half percent despite even despite today's pullback the s p is down three a uh, three tenths of a percent and the nasdaq is down 2.4 percent so it seems like two different markets but if you look at it as, as a whole, the, the Dow and the, the small caps have been underperforming the market this whole year. So it's not surprising. It's just how quickly this has happened is, is what's surprising. So hopefully find some footing here. Some of this churn helps, uh, you know, this rotation, and then we can, we can move on. That's the hope here. I don't want to see crazy volatility again tomorrow, but time will tell. All right. So individual names. I did my little quick rant on turn turns pharmaceuticals. It just blows my mind that it. <laughs> you look at the the data this morning from Roach, forty people in the cohort. There's zero details or specifics about the adverse effects, what the dosage was, how many different groups of those forty cohort was in different groups of the dosage. There was no details whatsoever. They just gave an overall generalization and said that the adverse effects were in line with the rest of GLP one drugs. <laughs> it was just mind boggling to me. And then it lly sells off 30 billion dollars and you do the math and that's 80 turns right if they just use that market capitalization to buy turns with the shares they could buy 80 turns for pharmaceuticals and, and turns will have their own uh, oral data back at the back half of of this year so anyway needs to say the stock all the way down to the low eights bounce and it's almost it was almost flat before it's down about two percent now still still have some hope here on the ten dollar strikes uh i guess was just talking about the rotation and the abruptness of some of these these swings maybe this this pullback today on turns and bounce kind of alleviates the need for more consolidation down the line it could just keep on going so we'll see how that all plays out still like turns here still have some july 10s and then uh those august 10s and i was looking at octobers but the premiums are kind of high so i'll probably just wait maybe the premiums will come out of those october strikes and i can get some of those uh heading into the you know the third quarter or so so that's turns uh, Unity, and I think GitLab, GTLLB, right? There's rumors of buyouts or something to that effect. Similar kind of, I'm not similar, but right, it's a platform where source uh, folks who program and, and stuff collaborate and build programs and whatever. It is. Unity is somewhat similar, I guess. I, you know, I'm not, 
I wish I, I don't have as much due diligence on uh, GTLB, but I think that's some of the reason why it spiked out of the gate this morning. I'm not saying that they're going to be the in the eyes of being ac acquired, but I'm sure it just means it's bullish for the sector. It's up here at 18 bucks, which is good. I think it's just a matter of time before that's into the 20s. 50-day moving average is, nine, is it 1853. So got up to 1833 earlier today. Maybe if it can get over that today or tomorrow, I think that'll bode well for the 20s coming maybe by Friday, if not Friday, then next week. Uh, Roku was hanging in there. And of course, I say hanging in there. I start talking. It was at 65.50. And now it's down to 64.80. Barely, barely green on the session. But a good sign considering the whole tech sector is getting the tech wreck, right? I guess you can call it a tech wreck. And uh, it's holding up relatively well in that 65 handle, which it hasn't hit since May. That's a good sign. And you take a look at typically when you see some of the other names in that that streaming space sell off, like Netflix, which is down 1.3% 1, 1 right now, you would think Roku would probably be down even more than that, but that they aren't. So I think that that bodes well for upside. Again, Netflix reports tomorrow after the close, that could provide a boost. And then maybe we'll get the earnings day for Roku, which should be at the end of this, this month. And that could be the next catalyst as well. I was talking about start of week and at the end of last week about earnings with Abbott. So Abbott was one of the names reporting. They actually report tomorrow after uh, before the open. Uh, I was looking for some calls because they've had some moves after their earnings. And I, and you take a look where the stock has dropped from, from the 100, 114, 115 level to down, down, it was at down 102, 101 at the, at the end of last week. Uh, but then um, Monday, Tuesday, it sells off. So I, I'm like, I don't want to play premium build with only one day left. It makes sense for me to get calls and then do some kind of binary trade on it. And I also had a, had put on a lot of positions yesterday, so that kind of weighed into the decision because it's purely speculative. You don't know if the company's going to report 100% without a doubt if they're going to report great earnings, beats, and raises. You don't know that, right? You can assume. You can do due diligence, research, market research. You can see who's buying baby formula at the at the register, whatever it is, whatever system you have. But it, of course, was it due today? It's up two percent, and then all the calls whether it be the weeklies and the monthlies are all up 200% or so because not only is the stock going up, causing the premium to rise, but it, the, the going into earnings, the premium's rising. So you get a premium build. So it would have been ideal. Add the calls yesterday, sell half to cover cost at least, maybe some profits as well, and then hold the rest into earnings today, uh, into earnings tomorrow. But of course I didn't do that. So I'll probably pass uh, right on it right now. Maybe I'll revisit at the that before the open tomorrow or at the open, if there's a decent report. So that's Abbott um, Square, which just was green a couple of minutes ago. And I say Square, it's block. Back down into red right now. Great sign as well. Text, you got the tech wreck going on and it's it's still hanging in there. So I think that bodes well. Not gonna really talk too much about a block. I've been talking about it uh, too much. <laughs> a Gilead. So you take a look at its move since the middle of July from 66 and change. Nice bounce then this morning. The chief medical officer is leaving. Uh, I had I got the calls the second day. I think it was the second, no, the first day when they announced positive HIV data where they had a, a, a shot that 100% effective against HIV. The stock went bonkers. I think I had a call at the end of the day. Then it gapped higher and ran the next day. I locked some into cover, <coughs> cover costs, excuse me. And then... Then what does it do? It sells off in the next seven sessions, all the way down to 66. Kind of took it off my radar. Uh, you know, it's a kind of an annoying name sometimes, but then it's just been melting higher. And then we have that CMO news this morning. And typically when you see a stock rallying on some kind of important person on the directors or management team leaving, that, that's like a good sign, right? It's like a sigh of relief for investors who could probably sick and tire of the old regime. Maybe it'll bring new blood in, things like that. So Sorry about that, folks. So usually that bo that bodes well, and I think that probably means that more that more is coming to this. And you, you take a look at the chart on, on Gilead; it was eighty bucks. Only let's see when that was. A couple. Come on, it's going too slow here. Hurry up. Uh, da, 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 da. Apologize. Yeah, so it had gap. So it was eighties back in January, and it actually started. The, it was eighty six back in the middle of January. So it doesn't mean that's where it's going. But I think there's an opportunity here to play for upside. So somehow I was able to lock the rest of my uh, my calls in for a small loss, but I had already locked gains in. So it was kind of like salvaging. And then I used some of that, used the capital to go and get those later data strikes. 
I think it trades into the 80s in the coming weeks into August. So that's kind of that on Gilead, folks. All right. And oh, and then last but not least here is, is Baidu. Uh, disappointed. It was actually holding up in the pre-market. And then it just got destroyed all the way down to 90.65. I was hoping it would hold yesterday's lows. It didn't. Uh, still still bullish here, but you know, still going to hold my calls because I, I think the timing is going to be tough. China, could, China markets could be up 2 3% overnight and Baidu could be back at 98, right? So I don't want to be uh, caught you know, out of a position having to chase. So I'll just continue to hold my, because they just have August strikes now. So I have plenty of time. Uh, you know, unfortunately, like I said this morning, they announced their earnings date. So that kind of takes out some of the premium, but uh, maybe it gets premium built into the earnings report. Um, I think that's about it, folks. Um, IWM's 223 now. Spy's back up to five, almost 558. <coughs> Excuse me. So hopefully that holds. And then let's see if we can get you to over that one uh, 1835 spot. So have a great day, folks. I'll be back on audio tomorrow. Rock and roll.